Hi everyone, welcome back to Double A's Medicine. In this video, we're going to be learning about the hip bone, also called the os coxae. So, as you all know, the hip bone consists of three parts: the upper flank, known as the ilium, the ischium, right here, and we also have the pubis. In this particular video, we are only going to discuss the features and the muscle attachments of the ilium in detail and in the upcoming videos we'll also talk about the ischium and the pubis so before we begin the video i'd like you all to smash the subscribe button and press the bell icon so you don't miss an update from my channel so with that said let's begin so if we generally talk about the hip bone the hip bone is a large irregular bone as you can see the hip bone is formed by the fusion of mainly three bones we have the superior part of the hip bone this is called the flank or also known as the ilium we have the antero inferior part right here this is called the pubis the pubis has a superior ramus and an inferior ramus and we also have the ischium which forms the posterior inferior part of the hip bone all of these three bones are fused at the acetabulum which contains the fusion lines of all of these three bones and the acetabulum is a cup like concavity which articulates with the head of the femur to form the hip joint also Please note that the pubic parts of both of the hip bones, they both articulate anterior inferiorly and they have an intervening cartilage in between. This is called the pubic symphysis and together they form a symphysial joint uh, anterior inferior. And together with the other hip bone, uh, the pelvic girdle is completed. So if we discuss the ilium in detail, so we see that the ilium is the superior flank of the hip bone. It is flattened and it consists of uh, four borders and it and three surfaces so right here we have the anterior border this is the anterior border it starts from the anterior superior iliac spine and runs all the way down to the acetabulum we have the posterior border we have the superior border this is the superior border also called as the iliac crest this hole is the iliac crest and on the uh, internal aspect of the ilium we also have a medial border the ilium also consists of three surfaces this is the lateral surface which faces outward or laterally and this is called the gluteal surface on the medial aspect of the ilium uh, we have mainly two surfaces and the internal aspect of the ilium is divided into two parts uh, by the medial border as discussed earlier in front of the medial border we have this smooth surface this is called the iliac fossa and behind the medial border we have this rough surface which is further divided into three parts uh, which we'll discuss later on this is called the sacropelvic surface and it is found behind the medial border so now we'll discuss the features of the ilium in detail we'll move in a systematic order we'll start from the borders then we'll discuss the features of the surfaces and then we'll move on to the muscle attachments so if we talk about the iliac crest as you can see this is the superior border in fact of the ilium and the iliac crest is divided into a uh, anterior two third part and the posterior one third part so it has a great uh, ventral portion and a very small dorsal portion the iliac crest when viewed from above when uh, viewed from above it has a sigmoid shape as you can see it is s-shaped uh, it is convex outwards uh, anteriorly and it is concave inwards posteriorly if you talk about the anterior two-thirds of the iliac crest, we see that the anterior two-thirds is divided into a uh, lateral lip, we have a medial lip, and between the two lips we have an intermediate area. The posterior uh, one-third of the iliac crest is also divided into two, two slopes, and the two slopes are the lateral slope and the medial slope. The iliac crest extends from the anterior superior iliac spine all the way back to the posterior superior iliac spine and 5 cm, around 5 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine we can see the tuberosity of the iliac crest or the tubercle of the iliac crest. So moving on to the anterior border we see that the anterior border extends from the anterior superior iliac spine all the way down to the acetabulum the anterior border consists of two projections we have the anterior superior iliac spine right here and we have the anterior inferior iliac spine right here the posterior border extends from the posterior superior iliac spine above and it extends all the way down to the upper part of the greater sciatic notch um, 
the posterior border consists of two projections just like the anterior border it has a posterior superior iliac spine and a posterior inferior iliac spine finally we have the medial border the medial border extends from the uh, iliac crest above all the way down to the iliopubic eminence below this is called the iliopubic eminence because it can because it connects this is an area that connects the ilium to the pubis so this is called the iliopubic eminence and the medial border separates the sacropelvic surface from the iliac fossa so the ilium al also has two surfaces it has an outer gluteal surface and we have two surfaces on the internal aspect of the uh, ilium we have uh, iliac fossa which is located anterior to the medial border and we have a sacropelvic surface which is located posterior to the uh, medial border the gluteal surface is divided into four parts by three gluteal lines we have an inferior gluteal line right here we have an inferior gluteal line right here we have the inferior gluteal line which extends from the um, anterior inferior leg spine all the way to the apex of the greater sciatic notch we have the anterior gluteal line which extends from the tubercle of the iliac crest above to the apex of the greater sciatic notch below and we also have a posterior gluteal line which extends uh, from dorsal part of the iliac crest above all the way down to the greater sciatic notch below so the inferior gluteal line the anterior gluteal line and the posterior gluteal line they all divide the uh, gluteal surface into four areas one two three and four so the internal aspect of the ilium is divided into two uh, surfaces by a medial border we have the iliac fossa anterior to the medial border and we have a sacropelvic surface posterior to the medial border the sacropelvic surface is further divided into three surfaces we have the uh, iliac tuberosity superiorly we have an auricular area right here this is known as the auricular area and we have the uh, pelvic area right here so moving on to the muscle attachments on the ilium we'll move in a systematic order we'll start from the borders we'll start from the attachments on the borders and then we'll move on to the attachments on the surfaces so before we start uh, please note that the red color symbolizes the origin of muscles the blue color is for insertion of muscles and the green color shows the attachments of ligaments and tendons etc so starting from the attachments on the anterior border we see that the anterior border has two projections the anterior superior iliac spine and the anterior inferior iliac spine the anterior in, uh, superior iliac spine gives origin to the sartorius muscle as you can see and it also gives uh, attachment to the lateral end of the inguinal ligament the anterior inferior iliac spine gives origin to a reflected head of the rectus femoris muscle and also to the iliofemoral ligament which you can see in green right here on the posterior border of the ilium we have the posterior inferior iliac spine the posterior superior iliac spine does not give attachment to any anything the posterior uh, posterior inferior iliac spine gives origin to the piriformis muscle as you can see right here so uh, the most important muscle attachments exist on the iliac crest so if we talk about the iliac crest it had a um, anterior two third portion and a posterior one third portion so on the lateral lip of the anterior two third portion of the iliac crest we see that we have the origin of the tensor fascial lata muscle right here just uh, behind the anterior superior iliac spine we have the origin of tensor fascial lata then almost throughout the lateral lip of the anterior two third we have the uh, insertion of the external oblique muscle and just uh, and just at the end of the insertion of the external oblique muscle we have the origin of the uh, latissimus dorsi muscle on the on the anterior uh, two third uh, of the iliac crest on the intermediate area we have the origin of the internal oblique muscle and on the uh, medial lip of the anterior two third of the iliac crest we have the origin of the uh, transversus abdominis muscle just around the margins of the origin of the transversus abdominis muscle we also have the attachment of the transversalis fascia which is uh, represented by a dotted line here so on the posterior one third of the iliac crest we see that we had two slopes we had a medial slope and we also had a lateral slope the medial slope uh, gives origin to the quadratus lumborum muscle 
uh, almost throughout the posterior one third of the alley crest. And the margins of the origin of the coditus lumborum give attachment to the thoracolumbar fascia. On the medial slope, uh, just outside the origin of the coditus lumborum muscle, we have the origin of the erector spinae right here. This is the origin of erector spinae. On the lateral slope of the posterior one third of the iliac crest, we have the origin of the of the gluteus maximus muscle, and this origin also extends onto the gluteal surface of the ilium, uh, just behind the posterior gluteal line. So if you talk about the muscle attachments on the surfaces of the ilium, so we see that we have the gluteal surface which I have exposed right here. And the gluteal surface was further divided into four areas by three gluteal line. We had the posterior gluteal line, the anterior gluteal line and we had the inferior gluteal line right here. The posterior gluteal line, just behind the posterior gluteal line we have the origin of the gluteus maximus muscle. Between the anterior gluteal line and the posterior gluteal line we have the origin of the gluteus medius muscle and between the inferior gluteal line and the anterior gluteal line we have the origin of the gluteus minimus muscle. Between the inferior gluteal line and the superior border of the acetabulum we also have the origin of the reflected head of the rectus femoris. So the reflected head of the rectus femoris one head goes on to the anterior superior anterior inferior iliac spine and one goes on to the um, just beneath the inferior gluteal line and the uh, two heads of the rectus femoris attach like this. The sacropelvic surface also articulates with the sacrum to form the sacropelvic joint. So moving on to the internal aspect of the ilium, we see that it is divided into two surfaces by the medial border. Anterior to the medial border we had the iliac fossa. The iliac fossa only gives origin to the iliacus muscle, only one muscle. And posterior to the medial border we had the sacropelvic surface. The sacropelvic surface actually articulates with the sacrum to form the sacropelvic joint. So moving on to the internal aspect of the uh, ilium, we see that the internal aspect is divided by the uh, medial border into the iliac fossa and the sacropelvic surface. The iliac fossa gives rise to the uh, iliacus muscle. The sacropelvic surface, which is, which is located posterior to the medial border, uh, th is divided into further three parts. We have the iliac tuberosity the iliac tuberosity and the auricular surface and we also have the pelvic surface right here. The iliac tuberosity should not be con uh, confused with the tubercle of the iliac crest which is located just 5 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine. This is the tubercle of the iliac crest and this is the iliac tuberosity so this should not be confused. The sacropelvic surface is giving rise to the dorsal sacroiliac ligament the interosseous sacroiliac ligament and the iliolumbar ligament. The auricular surface has this margin which I am tracing with my pencil. This margin gives rise to the ventral sacroiliac ligament and the pelvic surface also has part of the origin of the obturator internus muscle which spans all the way down to the uh, uh, inferior border of the obturator foramen. So this all sums up the muscle attachments and the salient features of the ilium. Uh, hope you guys learned a lot from the video and uh, in the upcoming video we'll talk about the pubis and the ischium as well. So stay tuned for that and uh, don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends. And yeah, see you guys in the next video.